you know, it's it's a you know that's a game had a heck of a game, um, had opportunities in all three phases, whether it was offense, defense, or special teams to make one more play that could put us over the top. Had I mean, and made, but at the same time made plays in all three phases at times and really did some good things. And uh, the heart, the competitiveness, have got to learn to find that inch on that one play or two plays, whether it's you know from from alignment, you know perfect technique, you know, just giving up an inch to be able to get a play, a first down, a touchdown, uh, you know, field goal, uh, return, you know. Guys played their hearts out in the game, and that's, but that's, you know, at the end of the day, you, you got to win the game. And uh, we got to figure that out and, and, and get it done and uh, move on. There's a very hurt locker room afterwards, very hurt. Like I say, we all, we all hurt. At the same time, was proud of the effort, the tenacity. Not taking no. I mean, had some set, uh, big setbacks in the game where they had some momentum swings, and we just kept answering back. I mean, there's a lot of character in there. There's, no, there's a lot of heart. There's a lot of toughness. There's a lot of skill, and we got to find it out. And as coaches, we got to keep finding ways for them to do it and putting them in position and demand they do it. And and then at times, you know, they have to pull the pin at the right time too. It's a combination of everything and uh, find one more play. But there's a lot of heart in them, a lot of toughness in them, and. Uh, Hopefully we got to move on this week to play Mississippi State. Mississippi State's a very good football team, uh, very physical. Defensively are a pain in the tail. Uh, Zach and what his defense does comes from the Rocky Long background up front with constant twists, stunts, blitzes, uh, multiple blitzes, uh, and constant movement up front with his ET twist, TE twist, T -t -t tackle nose twist, blitzes, packages, uh, secondary blitzes, um, a lot of multiplicity of things on defense, very physical, they're long. Uh, you know, 94, and those guys inside, 94, 9, 36 can rush, 37. 26 is big and physical on the edges. Corner, 3 can really cover. Uh, 7 is active and physical. 10 and 1 is the safeties, 4 and 34 the other ones. The backers play really hard inside. 44 and 14 are active backers that will play at the next level. They're physical, they're tough, do a great job. Offensively, uh, the quarterback has been banged up. Will Rogers, who was one of the best in the league, probably the top guy returning. Uh, they throw it. Uh, They've played, played in their backups right now, and it's changed them a little bit, not throwing it as much, but still really good. The back, Marks, I think, is as good a back as there is in the league. When you watch his film and, and the pro, like I said, he's, he's going to be a big-time pro guy, in my opinion. Five, can really run at receiver. He's had a 200-yard game against the South Carolina, can really make plays. The other receivers are long, lanky, athletic. Up front, they're good. Kicking game is good. And fives are also the kickoff return guy who was last year had an outstanding year, hasn't had quite as good a year in return game this year, but he's very capable and, and really hits it. So it's going to be a very good, very tough game. They're physical up front. Uh, we need to play well, get back and get back in the groove and flush that one from last week and take what we did well and build on it. And the things we get, the inches we got to find uh, on the other phases of we got to correct and move on and get ready to play a Mississippi State team this week. Questions? Down front, Brent. Update on Max Johnson and Le'Veon. Yeah, Max. Oh, Matt, Le'Veon uh, we got tackled. He's walking around. I mean, he didn't. It was not. A, it's not a terror. No surgery. Just he was looked like some of the swellings really come out. So hopefully we'll be you know we'll go day to day on that. Max finished the game. Was had a couple tough shots, but we'll wait and see how it goes. But he should be good. I mean, I'm planning on him playing. Hopefully, we'll see as it goes day by day. So 10, 10 and eleven over the past two seasons. Mm -hmm. Some close calls in there, obviously. What a lot kind of gives them. you the belief moving forward that you'll ultimately compete for titles? Well, I mean, I, because I think we have the talent, too, and I think the kids have the heart, too. I mean, you saw in that game. I mean, there, there's no – whether we're 10 or 11, guys aren't backing off of it. I mean, they're still competing and being right there at one play. And as long as you're, you're that close in that way and, they're, and they're, the look in their eyes, you can get there. And we just got to keep coaching them and finding those positions and stay healthy at the right position and get the ball to the right guy at the right time or get the right guy on defense free at the right time and, and make that play. I, I, you watch us play and how physical we play and how hard we play. I, I think it's – and our opponents, when they get done with the game, I mean, they're fortunate and they'll tell you. I mean, they, they knew we had a good team and it was played really well. We just got to find a way. And once you do it, I've been there and you build slowly and you, you've went down and build back up. Once you get over that hump and the guys can feel that, I think they'll take off, and I think we'll build it and do it. Second row, David, and then Ole. Been there before. Jim, over the last three years, several quarterbacks have gotten hurt. I think five done for the year. Have you all been able to assess the why behind it? Well, yeah. I mean, guys get banged up. I mean, a couple of our guys have gotten hurt on quarterback sneaks. I mean, so let alone on getting hit in the pocket. I mean, some, so some of the things we've had a toe. We had a, we had a turf toe last year. With He bent his toe. He was running and stuck his toe in the ground and got a turf toe. 
this year we had an ankle. We got he went to step up and the lineman came through and he stepped and hit an ankle. Uh, Max hit a hit his thumb on a helmet. I mean, some of them are freak, not good accidents. You get hit, you want nobody around your quarterback. But in today's game, that's that's an unrealistic thing. But you broke a thumb last year. Max on a follow through hit a helmet. Uh, Haynes turned his turf toe, when, which blew up, and we were stepping up to throw, and the guy hit what's, uh, Connor in the, in the ankle. I mean, that was as much as anything. So, and the year before, uh, Haynes was running in the open field. The one at Colorado, he wasn't getting hit in the pocket. He broke a run and scrambled out and was running and stuck his foot in the ground and, and got hit in space. I mean, some of it's freak accidents as much as anything. And it's unfortunate luck. I've, like I said, I've never had that happen before in my life, but it's, it's bitten us here, so hopefully we can get through it. In, the, uh, in three of the four losses, special teams has played a huge part in it. Have you thought about reassessing the way you guys go into special teams? We do it every day. We evaluate every day, every, every scheme we run, every deal we do, how much we work on things, how much we, you know, play on things. I mean, we sit there and, you know, hold brooms up for guys to kick over. I mean, you sit there and, you know, that ball got, like I say, the inches got the top of his finger. Uh, we were also returned one for a touchdown. We've returned three kicks or two kicks or one kick this year and one took it back, set up a score, and the other one scored this year. So we've had our, our great positive. And I think two years ago we were number one in the country on special teams. So, you know, it, it goes back and forth. You're always evaluating offense, defense, special team, every inch of everything you do. And you don't over-evaluate it either. Sometimes you, you go changing for changing. Sometimes you just got to do what you do better. So we try to do it every day. Second row, Olin, then we'll go to the back. Uh, Jimbo, if, if uh, Max is unavailable, what – what steps would you take then? I mean, what? Play well, next? Jalen would, would, would be the next would quarterback be the guy? play. Yeah, and him, Marcel, would play. They're, they're threes and fours. Okay. I didn't know if maybe you'd look at Anias as like a, a <laughs> what do you call it, wildcat. Um, all right, just wanted to confirm that. And then um, because of the injuries at quarterback, I wonder, does that make you all ever feel like you have to uh, kind of relook at at, at blocking schemes or anything like that. Well, I mean, you watch and you go watch quarterbacks that run around out there in college football. They get the heck knocked out of them every week, and they're not sliding and running through. And some guys, some guys are just more prone to be injuries than others. I mean, you know how you block, how you pass block, how you run block. I mean, like I said, how they got hurt. I mean, hit a thumb in space running five yards down the field. Uh, turned my tur turf toe and. What was the other one? I think Connor. Connor got we got beat on a protection. He stepped up. The guy hit him in the ankle. So no, not really. I mean, you don't, you don't change that. Go back behind the lights to the left side, Tyler, and then to the right, Ben. Jim, are there any unique challenges going up against a, a head coach for the first time, like like Zach that you, you, know, you haven't seen head to head before? Uh, it depends if if it was a first game or two. But he's got you know eight nine games under his belt. You kind of see where they're at because you know everybody's team's going to be the same and. And he's a defensive guy, so you know what they're going to do defensively. They've changed offensively a little bit. Their, their uh, philosophy offensively and system offensively is not the same as it was under Mike. So, But we've had eight or nine games, so you know that. And, but there's always things you're not going to know about a guy until he coaches a couple of years probably. And then um, especially for the seniors, but kind of how special or, or, or cool is it to have another night game at Kyle? Well, uh, I think so. it's great. They love them. They love the games. They love any game in Kyle. I mean, they like, I mean it's funny. Everybody says night games. We at 11 o'clock, we've been over 100,000 every game. We're 100, 102,000 every game, whether it's 11 o'clock at night or 6.30 in the evening. I mean, 11 o'clock in the morning or 6.30 in the evening. It's amazing how our people show up no matter what the, what the circumstances are. But it's great to be in, in night games. Guys will be juiced up, and they'll get all day and be ready to go. Hang back behind the lights on the right, Ben, and then Chip right in front. Coach, we've seen it at times this year. It seemed like a little bit more maybe this past Saturday. Uh, Max having to buy time, kind of backpedaling and, and having to kind of throw it away off his back foot at times. Well, it's been a couple of times we got to step up too. Yeah. A couple of times we got to, you know, a couple of, we had some pressures in there that he, he, we got early, but later on we started, they were going out wide. We got to step up in the pocket. That causes some of that too, but that's just a feel and you got to get a feel for it. Is and there, sometimes there's unblocked guys. If they're bringing hot routes, if you're bringing, right. you got five and they're bringing six, if you got six, they're bringing seven. If you got seven, they're bringing eight, then you, you know, you're getting it out. And he did a couple, he did about two times in that game. They, they brought extra people than we had blocking. And he, and he hit the hot route. And matter of fact, hit three, I think twice, number three, twice on really good option routes in there. Then you got them. Are there any adjustments you can make during the game to, if if stepping up for whatever reason it has to be. Well sometimes you step up or something depending on the play. No. You just gotta tell him feel the rush. You listen, quarterback's got two fronts he's gotta deal with. Right. The 
coverage and the protection and the people around him. You don't ever look at the people around you. That's complete feel. If your eyes ever look at the rush, you're done as a quarterback. You read coverage, feel rush, and you got to be able to feel pressure around you. Some guys do it different different ways and different things they see based on what the play is or whatever. So that's just something you can work at continually and everything get better as reps. And it's, it's hard to simulate. You can only simulate it with live reps in practice or simulated hard rush and guys getting in the pocket. And lastly, just what have you made from it with what the job Coach Arnett's done? Obviously, difficult circumstances, just but just how he's kind of handled that experience, obviously very tough. Well, I mean, I don't know him very well, but he's obviously done a good job. They're really good on defense, and unfortunately, they had some bad luck with the quarterback. I mean, they've, they've had not had their uh, quarterback for, I think, three games now. And, uh, you know, that's unfortunate for a, early co a young coach, too, because I think it's, it's affected them offensively. But they've changed their style, and it's been very tough. They're, they're a completely different style, and you got to really play their quarterback because they're athletic, the new guy they're playing. So you've done a good job. Back in the middle, Chip. Jimbo, you guys have used, the, uh, especially Saturday, the quarterback sneak quite a bit on short yardage very successfully. Did, did you change any way of how you're doing that at all? No. And then if you go back, we used to do it with Kellen really well. Kellen did it really well, depending on what your center is, your guard is, your situation, and who your quarterback is. Some, some quarterbacks do it really well. If you go back and look, some guys know how to get that push, and, and 14 is doing a really good job of getting that push. I mean, there's nothing we've changed. But because you knew that, I mean, have you done, called that play more because you thought well, that we he was – we give them the option to, yeah, or have the ability to do it. Uh, it's always been built into everything we do. Our short yard is saying we've always had the ability to go to the line and – sneak if we want to it's always a lot of times there'll be another play called and the quarterbacks will check it they'll check it and go to it by what they see at the front based off what they see off what we've told them so sometimes that's a that's a check just like it is on any other play Down front. sometimes they can put too many guys in there sometimes you get you get four guys and three gaps sometimes in there or get certain guys in certain leverages or certain things we know we run different we have different plays ran so they can check to it or or run it front right cole Jimbo, you kind of mentioned it, that they switched up their offense from what Mike used to run versus what they are now. What have you noticed about their rushing attack primarily? It's, it, it's, they're trying to rush the ball. I mean, they're trying to run it uh, more traditionally with zones and stretch is a big play in their counters. I mean, you know, a lot, of, lot more diversity in their run game from power runs to counter runs to stretch runs, inside zone runs, and then their cheat runs. I call their cheats when they're bringing the motions and trying to get the skill guys the ball outside. And then is there any challenge when you don't know who their starting quarterback is going to be, especially oh, no with, with right now being benched last week? I mean, the amount of time – with the amount of time you have to prepare, you say, well, you can prepare for two of them. Well, how do you do that? I mean, that's hard, man. I mean, that's hard. You do it, but you don't get as many reps or looks or feel for what you have. And also, you know, you judge what a guy does on film. You get a feel for him on, you know, certain pressures of how you pressure, what he wants to do, and all those things matter, man. It, it's it's, it's kind of going in blind. Front left, Cease, and then Travis. You said from day one you liked the makeup of this team, the mentality, the work ethic, but when you're now 0-3 against ranked teams, how, how do you build or keep confidence in that situation? Educate. You have to educate and coach. Don't get frustrated. Don't blame. Look at why it happened. And, and that's – well, here's what I say. I still do because how that team competed in that game, I still love our leadership of the game. They didn't – they didn't fall away. They kept competing and playing every play. And they got to learn to make. We got to learn to help them make another play. But I still like the dynamic and personality of this team and its ability to compete. And the, like anything else, if something in your life happens bad, do you panic or do you say, "Okay, why did it happen?" Educate myself and try to try to work through it. And then the the difference here is sometimes in the real world you can overcome things. But you know, there's a physical aspect of this too in sports that you got to see it. Then you physically got to be able to do it and affects on the other guy. But I love the dynamic of their ability to compete. Not, they don't point fingers at each other. They don't blame each other. Go back to work the next day, and and when they're there, they compete as hard as they can compete. Front right, Travis. What was it about uh, Jalen Henderson that stood out to you? And how do you recruit a guy that has not as much college film? What does well, that process look like? Guys know him from high like? school. Guys know him from high school. Some of our guys off the field, and Bobby being out west, knew the guy and had some background of him from high school, and guys that liked him and and thought you know liked his athleticism, his arm strength, his talent, and knew. Uh, one of the guys knew the quarterback trainer. I mean, the, con the connections for people now that have trainers, coaches, eh, because of social media, because of internet. I mean, you know, we know guys as well in California. Sometimes you used to know guys that lived a half hour down the road because of the way things are now in the camps and all that stuff. So people know everybody. And you, you reach out and guys will call you. Hey, I got a guy that's maybe looking to move. Uh, you know, if they get in the portal, let us know. You know what I mean? And then 
you you do a background on them, and they can give you got people you can trust that you've been around that can give you a history on a guy or a guy's talent or. And then after he gets them, they may send you a workout video or something of that nature, and you can you know you can judge or film. And if you do have film, you watch film. Second row on like the right. Like everything else in the world, day there is everybody's next door. <laughs> Olin, is there any um, question at all about the Shamar Turner's availability for this? No. Week? Okay, so mm-hmm. no league thing here. With the- no, not nothing from the league. Fourth row on the left, Rob. Howdy, coach. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Right here. Yes, sir. Um, you've talked in the past about um, how when freshmen, freshmen come in, if they're really good, and you, you got to get them on the field. But how difficult is it um, when you have to put a freshman out on the field due to injuries to other players to compete in the SEC? In the it, it can be. It, it just depends, again, where his status is. I mean, and sometimes they need, as I say, it's like a, sometimes it's like a young eagle on a, on a cliff, sometimes mama just got to push them off the cliff, and all of a sudden, you, and you're worried if you were scared if they can fly too, but they, they take off. You know what I mean? You always hold your breath, but you know, ideally, in the old days, if it was if it was my world, we'd go back to no no freshman could play, and you'd redshirt everybody. I hate to say it. I mean, I know that sounds old schoolish, but I think from a maturity standpoint and a pressure standpoint, and the things that guys are put under today because of social media and the scrutiny of media and all the things that your performance. I wish guys had a year to. Do that, stay away from everybody, grow up, mature, and go. But that's not the world we live in. So, you know, that's, that is what it is. I'm saying for their development, you know what I'm saying? Because they all want to get to the league in a hurry in three. If they'd wait five, they might stay a lot longer, four or five, but, uh, and handle the, handle the world a little better. But it's scary at times. But, you know, it's each, each individual basis. I mean, each guy, some guys have, can step in and play, and some guys take a year. So, but when you have to do it, it makes you nervous as a coach. Just, uh, because they haven't done it. You haven't seen them do it with the lights on. And But then sometimes you'll say, what, you're nervous? Some guys take off. You know what I mean? They just needed that nudge, and then other guys, you know, panic. So keep your fingers crossed. Don't sleep the night before. <laughs> Down front, Brett, and then we'll wrap up with Carter on the left. So because you do have less time with these guys, both, you know, during the year and also, as you mentioned, eligibility-wise, do you ever say, hey, we've got to simplify things in your approach, or how does how do you yeah, take or, that Yeah, but also you got to get them ready to play the next level. I mean, that's up to them. I mean, where they want to go, yeah. They're, and you make it simple. With, they, package, got, all guys have that. Certain guys have packages. We, we're, this is your package. If you show you can do that, you get more stuff or we can add stuff to it. And that, everybody, every receiver has that. Every DB has that. Every quarterback has that. Every lineman, you, that's when you play them. That's the way you do it. We've always done that. And uh, just kind of a bigger picture update on two guys. Reuben Fothery, you know, guys that – Went into the season with expectations, mm-hmm. and Tony Grimes. Are there any kind of long-term Tony's, updates Tony's, on those Tony's guys? been banged up and, and hurt, and he and, and won't probably play the rest of the year. I mean, nothing. I mean, nothing that won't be healed up. But and Father, just getting back to strength. I mean, just like that leg, like say the knee and his leg strength and all that stuff is, is still not exactly where it probably needs to be. Carter, second row on the left, wrap us up. Jimbo, did you see uh, Chase Bassanis take a step forward uh, against Ole Miss? I think he didn't have a pressure allowed in that game. No. Well, he did. You just didn't know it. See, that's why I say all the stuff that you guys evaluate from your PFF is not true. <laughs> some of it is, some of it ain't. Because you don't know who – how do you know who they're supposed to be blocking? Can y'all answer me that? You can't. I mean, and – but he had, he, had one, he had one mistake. But other than that, he played really good. But it's funny you say that because he did. And it looks like he blocked a guy. He blocked the wrong guy. Well, that was one time. Now, I'm not crazy. It was one time. So, PFF gives him 100. We give him a minus. Now, other stuff, you guys give him a minus. We give him a plus. I mean, uh, that stuff, it kills I know. How do you know how to grade a guy if you don't know his assignment? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a funny thing to me on that. But he's, he played much. He played really good in the game. He, he played good in the game. Uh, had one, and that was a communication thing up front that was not communicated to him properly. So he did that, and then, but it counted as that. But then he getting better and playing, and like I say, getting that. I call that freshman second wind. Sometimes those guys will hit, especially at play a lot early. They'll get it, and about middle of that year, sometimes you'll see them freshmen all the time. Man, I don't care. I, I, for years and years, all the great ones I've had have seen doing it. just like it overwhelmed them to prepare that much, and then they kind of get their bearings back, get an off week or a second win and come back. But he played, like I say, did a really good job in the game, got better. He's going to be one heck of a player. And, really is. And on the uh, field goal block, was Max supposed to block the guy on the outside or was that kind of a – If he, The guy's too wide. That had no effect on the play. 
If he gets, if they go that wide within our angle, then they're never going to touch the ball in, in reaction and do it. Yeah, he's supposed to get try to get a hand hand on the pad tip and go. But when them guys loop that far, they're never a factor on the play. If they, you got them cut where their angles are, where their feet are in a snap, and where the hold is, it's all ball by the angle. You can get it. But he never. It wasn't the ball was hit up in the middle. It got, gotcha. was not blocked off the edge. Gotcha. The guy I think 50, he was credited 50. with it. But right, it but they wrong. went back on the video. They gave credit. So you in got the again. Got yeah. another PFF miss. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I mean, you didn't, 51 got the block. Yeah. In the middle. No, yeah. I saw it. They, I saw it when it happened. So what did you assess as kind of the mistake that was made or if there was one? kicked one inch too low. Yeah. And got him on his finger. I mean, there was no penetration, and he hit it good. And the guy was a six seven guy that got up and hit him right there on the top of his finger. And because it almost went to the goalpost. And, I mean, it just – I mean, it barely snipped the top of his finger. That was it. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you.